Hello and welcome to my presentation proposal. I have developed a presentation to provide a well-rounded source of visual and conceptual inspiration for a mayoral project. Most topics that are covered can be seen in this diagram. In Jeremy Della's Everybody in a Place, he explains the history of rave culture to a class of college students. This has provided the inspiration for my project. In this video, I'll touch briefly on the talking points of my seminar. I'd like to start with the ancient history of wall painting because it becomes easy to see why art crosses cultural boundaries. Here you can find forms of visual communication and prehistoric man's want to create or leave a mark on the world. Ancient Egyptians decorated sacred tombs with stories of their gods and the afterlife. You can see comic book like compositions and here larger characters are shown to represent higher importance. Hieroglyphs were both phonograms and ideograms like our alphabet and today's emojis. The murals preserved in Pompeii could be seen today to represent lower art and high art. The chicken shop counter images had a simple function whilst the frescoes at the Villa of Mysteries are thought to depict mystical initiation rituals. It is interesting that the deep reds, dim lighting and the composition of being surrounded by paintings inspired Rothko's room in the Tate. The Mexican muralists used their art as powerful political tools, often containing light and dark themes or a Jungian integration of the shadow. In the US, some murals were sponsored by the state and some spoke out against the state. Irish murals were used as propaganda and to mark out territories, but later on were covered over with much less aggressive artworks. There were lots of powerful political murals in London, Cable Street directly referencing Diego Rivera's artwork. The Floyd Road mural put the community and collaboration forward as a politic in itself. Some artists did away with politics and produced abstract works or visual responses to architecture. Rosenquist scrapped the idea of a lineal narrative for a multiplicity of narratives within his artworks, which is important to consider when a group of people collaborate together. The pop art movement is important to look at if you consider Walhall's use of icons and reappropriation of images and everyday objects. Michael Craig Martin's paintings collect images together in a fun way. We see in popular culture everywhere the reinvention of stories and ideas. In this image we see a few visual iterations of the Hulk but it's an interesting side note how modern day superheroes relate to classic archetypes and characters from ancient stories. In this painting, in which Warhol collaborated with Basquiat, with the coming together of two styles, it is clear to see that when we collaborate, we create new meanings. The 1980s graffiti movement used the pop art notion of appropriating cartoon characters in their work. The popularisation of urban graffiti art gave rise to the street art movement. Artists today have lots of approaches to street art. Typefaces and calligraphy can be seen on walls. More technically detailed and futuristic painting styles have emerged. JR is a Parisian photographer. Risking his safety, he pastes his artwork up in conflict zones, exposing human sides of the local people, often demonised by the media. His work is often quite fun, but some of his subjects are victims of tragic crimes, so his work is also a great example how fine art has the permission to tell any type of story.